Hello everyone, welcome to my shop. I'm Robin and today we're going to do a little mix of old school and CNC. Uh, this was a, a ductile iron spindle mount that I needed to make. This is back from some archive footage that I never edited into a, a video. Uh, no rocket science here, don't get too excited about this video, but it might be interesting and I'm going to try to uh, show anything educational I can along the way as I uh, voice over it. This is uh, all voiceover uh, because I was recording these things um, with the shop at full tilt with my son working and you know high noise level so um, it's all going to be uh, voiceover which which isn't necessarily a bad thing so let's get on with the show using the roll-in saw to get rid of the excess material this is about two millimeters oversized on all three dimensions setting the z-axis to be zero at the vice base by presetting it at 2 inches on a 2 inch block. Using a piece of 3 seconds welding rod on the rough cast face of the part to accommodate any irregularities as it crushes. I have the sawn face of the block on the stationary jaw and the aluminum welding rod on the back side taking half of the total material allowance of the 2 millimeters cut off here just using jog to uh, cut these faces. Could write a program but it jogs pretty quick and for a one of I just didn't bother using the paintbrush here to uh, keep the chips from going all over the shop take the part out knock the burrs off with a file clean the vise out well I have these uh, vise jaws and the, the actual vise bodies milled to the jaws stationary jaws lean forward a little bit so that under pressure they're very square same procedure on side two, which we are now making perpendicular to the first side we milled. Filing off all the edges, taking the part out, cleaning the vise out, getting ready to put it back in to do the third side. And still using the uh, aluminum rod, tapping it down and uh, machining side three still using jog I was tapping the part down because this is actually taking the part to size in this case so it being tight to the vice bottom uh, as our reference is important I warned you to not get too excited about this video. File on the edges. This is side three we just got done doing to dimension. We're going to pop it out. Clean everything out. In this case, we're not going to be using the weld wire because we've got two parallel machine faces to grip on. Grabbing it, tapping it down with the brass, making sure we're seated good. Going to our finished dimension and machining this face off. You may notice that there was already a machined face. Uh, that's because I took two passes on this and just cut out the, the initial pass, save some time. So there it is, finished on the four sides. On the sanding block we're now uh, uh, that's 220 silicon carbide paper that's uh, tacked to the surface plate with um, 3M77 spray. Just spray one side actually I just spray the paper on one side let it just tack one side only and then press it down on the um, cast iron. Very handy item. Using a square here, a knife edge square and one thing that's very careful here, you'll see me tapping, but I'm never tapping with the square touching on there. I'm backing away slightly and um, anytime I'm touching. And when you see me grab the top, I'm actually flexing the blade usually to see whether I've got drag at the top or not. And I'm feeling for the drag. Just a way to get a good feel on there without sight by making sure you're tight at the bottom and then feeling at the top and then locking it up. Just milling one end, just taking off enough material to clean up. 
Just using my hand to keep the chips from spraying on me. This is ductile iron, so it does not chip out on the edges like gray iron can. Um, this cutter would be okay, you know, because it has a 45 degree lead, but um, something you have to be careful of on, on gray iron is edge chipping as you come out the edges. But this is ductile. This is uh, not a problem at all. Really nice stuff to work with. Has a nice, unique smell. Um, yeah, I know I'm sick. Chamfermeister. Just knocking, a, knocking the edges off here. This is my belt sander that I converted to uh, be able to put adjustable size chamfers on. Very handy. Yes, sooner or later I'll do a video on it. But um, works real nice. Really needs an oscillation feature to use the full face of the belt to be ideal. Because um, it tends to wear a groove, which you can compensate for. But then after a while that groove gets tired and uh, you need to move. The, I just use the tracking to move over to another spot. Okay, now we're going to, sitting on the bottom, we tap down tight and we're just taking it to dimension um, on the other other uh, end. Little chamfermeister action on the end that we just milled there. So now we're going to have all the edges deburred for proceeding on with the next operations. Here I'm putting some dicom on, just for reference so that it's a double check to everything that's going on. And I'm going to be just drilling a series of holes in here to remove that whole chunk of material out of there. And I'm picking drill sizes that work out for the dimensions that I need to go to. And leaving a little, uh, maybe a five thousandths web um, mathematically between the uh, holes so that they don't actually run into each other while drilling. Um, drills tend to drill oversized a little bit anyhow, especially when you're drilling a reasonably long depth. So um, I just pick a drill size that works out for the for the width and, and length that's going on there. And um, you can cheat on how much material you're, relieving, you're leaving on the walls to make that work out. The 1, 2, 3 blocks are just in the vise against the stop for me to be able to edge find to get the effective location of where the stop is. Part in, doing center drilling of the holes. Actually spot drill I used and then dr drilling with the actual drill. Ductile iron actually likes a little bit of lubrication. You can do it dry but it's happier with just a little bit of juice. The uh, bottles with the uh, lower lock caps and um, little hypodermic needles is really nice for applying coolant on directly where you want it without having everything flooded and slinging all over on you. The vacuum and air hose combination works well because the stuff shoots out of the holes all over the place, but having the vacuum right there to grab it works well in cleaning the holes out. taking the block over to the sanding plate to just knock all the burrs off the edges so that we got a good surface that we're we're gripping on. Once you do one of those plates it's going to be uh, like wow why did I not have this sooner. Now we're getting ready to do the center spot drill and holes for the bottom edge When we get to the part where we take this out, it'll make more sense blowing the blowing the holes out there. There's what it looks like. Getting rid of the one continuous web there on uh, on the outside face with the hacksaw. I'm only sawing through the top, not through all the rest. All the rest are all are just like a feather that's left in between there. This is for you, Tony. No. No special effects were used in the creation of this. <laughs> yeah, 
and there's what we were trying to accomplish getting uh, all that material out sure you could have machined it all out with just plowing away at it with a with a uh, insert cutter but um, just thought this would be fun then I'm doing uh, CNC work here to actually finish the pocket there you see everything finished on the inside now I'm doing mounting holes and other things that are uh, part of the actual spindle design uh, yeah, obviously this is all programmed reaming there with some uh, there's a dowel pin that goes in there another s different face getting its holes put in counter bores Keyless chuck is a handy quick change for these one-off jobs like this where you don't need a lot of rigidity. More or less just drilling operations. Here I'm using a uh, rougher finisher end mill to actually just whack out that whole shape in the end of the part there. Notice I've got the block. Uh, 246 block in there to support this thing give that wall some stability and the clamp there holding that wall of the part up against there and then taking a finish cut here doing the whole pattern on that end of the part some drilled and tapped holes and clearance holes and I'm milling the bottom of the pocket there and that's done